afternoon. We have our first signing of the summer. Marley Watkins, as we have been reporting for a little while, um, has been signed from Barnsley. Free transfer, a uh, three-year deal. Uh, Paddy, this is something that we we've done we've done a fair bit of research on on Marley already, haven't we? Because it's been something that's been expected for a few yeah. weeks. Um, so, uh, to start with, please to get it over the line. You, you feel it's a, a good signing? Oh yeah, very very good signing. Yeah, I think um, Stuart Webber, the quotes attributed to him uh, from the club that he fits the profile, and I think that that you got that sense anyway. But obviously, the guy the guy's confirmed it. You know, young, hungry, careers on the up. Um, he's had disappointment along the way. Uh, he had to drop into non-league. Didn't quite make it at Swansea, and I think that kind of breeds a type of player who, you know, I've, I think I've written about it. You draw the parallels with the Lambert crew that they were almost fighting against the odds and trying to po prove people wrong. And I think this lad falls into that category. And the fact that he's just recently been called into the Welsh squad and might get a bit of action next week in Serbia, you know, this is this is a guy going places, and um, it's a real favour in Norwich's cap because I know for a fact there was a lot of interest in the Championship. Um, I think he even actually went and uh, and I looked round Wolves from what I'm led to believe as well as Norwich so you know it isn't just a financial decision for him I think he probably could have earned more money elsewhere but he, he's been sold at a vision under Weber and Farker and uh, he's bought into it so I think and the reaction from what I've seen so far is hugely positive I think Norwich fans think this is an excellent bit of business Absolutely uh, he's played in non-league hasn't he he played yeah. for Cheltenham, Bath, Hereford played a bit in Scotland for, for Inverness um, he's actually achieved quite a bit in a, in a short space of time. He joined Barnsley in 2015. They won the League One playoffs and the EFL Trophy last season. And then he scored 10 goals in 45 games in the Championship this year. And as Daniel Farker pointed out in his quotes, uh, also had nine assists to his name. So this is a guy who, you know, hopefully from looking at him, is maybe in the Jamie Vardy mould. He's working hard because he's come through non-league. Um, supposedly very fit, supposedly works very hard, but he's also already proven at this level, isn't he? He is, he is. He's had an excellent couple of seasons uh, with Barnsley, um, and we all saw, you know, uh, maybe not so much Carro, but anybody who was at Oakwell, that that was, that was a team of young, hungry footballers, and subsequently, I think Villa went and, and got the lad Hurahane, didn't they, and James Bree as well, and yeah. Winnell went off to Sheffield Wednesday, so he was very much in that mould. Um, and yeah, as you rightly point out, it's not just goals, he'll bring assists, and Apparently his, his appetite for work is, is unbelievable during games. So, you know, you can see the scenario already that, you know, where Norwich failed and came up short away from home at the Rotherhams at the Burtons of this world last season, if you stick a guy like Marley Watkins in there, not only with his pace you're going to have that out ball over the top, but he isn't going to be found wanting in terms of working. And, uh, you know, maybe that wasn't always the case from certain individuals in, in attacking areas away from home particularly. It seemed to me that he is... A potential replacement for Stephen Naismith if if Naismith were to leave this summer. I mean, obviously we'll have to see what the finances dictate on on the front of that one. But he seems a fairly similar player. Um, we've done a, a bit with um, a Barnsley fan, which is on Pinkin.com at the moment, a bit of a Q and A about uh, how they feel. And the word he used was gutted, and that he was one of their crown jewels. Yeah. Um, so he says he can play wide and as a number ten or as a striker. So um, he looks like he he is. Um, a good addition, um, and this is the first signing of the Stuart Webber Webolution, as people are, <laughs> are, are yeah. calling it. And, and of course, Daniel Farker arrived next week and already has got his first man of his of his new era. So things are moving along in the in the in the right direction, aren't they? They, they are, and and I think I've, I've seen somebody point it out on Twitter that you know how many uh, previous eras have we had where basically June zero happened, and uh, yeah. you know it was almost a, a waiting pattern. Uh, until almost it felt like at times they got back to pre-season this isn't going to happen with these two guys certainly with Weber, he will want to do as much business as early as he can um, because then you're in control of the situation you know rather than maybe having to react to events you lose players late in the window and, and then it's almost like right okay where do we go now which let's be honest that seemed to be the impression with, with the previous <laughs> regime and the fact that Weber came in and one of his first public acts was to get rid of three of the recruitment guys he's now confirmed in the last few days the two guys he worked with at Wolves have come on board. You know, he clearly identified that was a weakness, and it's, I don't think it's going to be a weakness moving forward. Um, despite obviously financially, they won't have as much to play with as, as they've had in recent windows. But I think they're going to be very astute in what they try to do. And uh, yeah, I don't think it's any coincidence the timing is today, given it is I think officially Daniel's first day in, in post, and it, and it does send a clear signal that this is new, this is a new era and, and a new way of doing things. And uh, 
yeah, long might continue, hopefully. Well, under Alex Neil and Ricky Martin, we were told that business just didn't happen at the start of the summer because everyone's on holiday. But um, clearly, Stuart Webber is not of the same opinion. Uh, just to back up a little bit, um, please do get your comments and questions in. And we, we have got a few here already. Um, one which I'll kick off with, which I think you'll like, Pad, uh, from Dice Sturdy. Hello. Seen I've seen it, mate. Don't worry. Hello I was from for you Coventry. To get to that. <laughs> um, so Coventry Massive, following everything you do, Pad. Um, not related, by the way. Mitchell Kostic, greetings from Australia. So there we go. Uh, far and wide on Facebook. Uh, uh, and this is the other news as well today. Um, the loads going on. As Paddy said, the, the two um, recruitment chiefs confirmed yesterday. Um, but the morning, uh, this morning, the, the news broken by, by the man alongside me here was that Johnny Housen uh, could well be on his way out of Norwich City this summer. Uh, has been offered a new contract, but doesn't look like his future is here. Uh, so, Pad, yeah, what can, what can you tell us about Johnny Housen's future? Well, I think the reality is, you know, there's a lot of elements to this. I've, again, I've seen, you know, I've seen certain individuals on, on social already today, and it's kind of maybe trying to apportion blame to certain individuals in this process. I, I just think it's almost, it feels like for both parties, maybe it's run its course. For Johnny Allison, young family, wants to get back north. Um, maybe he's just turned 29. Maybe he feels he's got one more decent move in him. Um, and, it, and it, I don't even think it's a, it's a kind of he wants to get away from Norwich, the club, the area. I, I don't think that, that there is an issue there per se. I just feel that he thinks, with a young family, that the time is right for him him to move on and, and maybe try and, you know, there's plenty of clubs you, we can all we can all put them in the mix there. Huddersfield newly promoted, plenty of plenty of money now awash with Premier League cash um, in that Yorkshire area. Leeds, although from what I'm led to believe, I don't think Leeds will have the finances to to go for the, the type of player that Johnny Housen is uh, this summer so I, I would put a line through that and then you've got the clubs who've come down the, the Sunderlands and Middlesbroughs um, and the Hulls in fact you know all in that same geographical area who, who would all probably have the finances that they could come to Norwich with an acceptable bid but from Norwich's point of view <coughs> there's no secret you know we've heard it every public utterance from Messrs Stone Messrs Webber Norwich if they want to bring players in this summer, in terms of paying for players, contrasted to obviously Marley Watkins coming in in on free, I mean, in terms of paying fees, they're going to have to be creative. That's that's the word. They're going to have to lose one or two. In an ideal world, you wouldn't want to lose Johnny Allison because we all know what he brings, what he has brought, how good he is in the championship. But you know, if you take a view, do you do you sell an Alex Pritchard or a Johnny Allison? For me, it's a Johnny Allison because Alex Pritchard is only going to get better, and we we saw that he's somebody you could probably build a team around, and I'd. I just think from everything you see, everything we we hear, that they want to go that route, that they want a younger, fresher, hungrier set of players. And that's no reflection on Johnny House. I just think he is the one who they know on the market is probably going to command a decent fee. And if Johnny doesn't feel he wants to be here and wants to move on, then it makes sense for all parties concerned. But of course, you know, I can understand that there's a lot of people who wouldn't want to see Johnny House and go, but... A very popular guy, isn't he? Of course he is, yeah. 29 years old. And he's still got this. Yeah, he's still got some deep. I mean, people are talking, he's probably only in his prime now, and that's probably true. You know, yeah. he probably still is, these next season or two are going are gonna to be his best because he's at the peak of his powers. And, mm. and why wouldn't you want a Johnny Harrison in your team? But the reality is, the finances dictate that Norwich will need to sell players. Yeah. And, and if a Johnny Harrison or a Tim Closer are going to be the most saleable commodities in that sense, and, and players who they. they absolutely do not want to lose either Pritchards, the Murphys, the Madisons then then the decision will have to be taken so you know there's a lot of water to flow under the bridge now clearly that's that's where, where we are um, you know there's been no firm bids is, is my understanding and, and this might this might play out over the entire duration of the summer but I think ultimately I, was, I would be very surprised if come September the 1st the window is closed if Johnny Housen is still a Norwich player OK well Simon Davies says could Housen be persuaded to stay uh, and Jason Boyd 6 million plus for Housen um, I'd let him go now of those clubs that you've already mentioned I would have said you can probably chuck Sheffield Wednesday in the mix because yeah. they've got money haven't they and yeah. I would have thought they would very happily have Johnny Housen. Uh, Derby as well. I know it's not Yorkshire, but it's not a million miles away. It's certainly closer than, than Norwich is. They've got money. You know, there's there's plenty of options for Housen. So I guess in, in Norwich's point of view, they're hoping that they can create a bit yeah. of an auction, really. Um, I mean, six million, you, you would have said, would be the starting point that they want, isn't it? That seems to be, yeah, the benchmark, I think. I mean, the four million talk, well, the fact it was Leeds, I mean, there was, there was clearly nothing in that, but I think four million for a guy was, was still two years left on his contract. Um, and as I say, a real decent, decent championship operator in his position 
No, I don't. I don't think they'd be looking for four. I think it'd be six as a starting point, and hopefully, as you rightly say, Dave, you get two or three interested parties with deep pockets. You might be able to bump up that price. Um, but that is the you know going back to his contract situation. Again, people are saying, well, hang on, there's there's no urgency. If if you set aside what we're talking about, that Norwich need to generate funds, and just purely look at his contractual situation, you, they couldn't let House and go down into the final twelve months of his existing deal. Exactly, because you're knocking value off. The aren't value it? goes down absolutely. You know, off a cliff almost, and and ultimately he could sit tight and and basically move for nothing in the worst case scenario. So, you know, if it's going to happen, it, it really has to happen this summer, I think. Yeah. Uh, well, Chris Harrison says twelve million for House, and I mean, I think <laughs> I think we'd pretty, be pretty sure Norwich would take twelve million. I, I guess in the situation they're in, the clubs that they're likely to be dealing with, you can probably stick a. Um, uh, promotion clause into the contract for you know another million or yeah, so maybe, for, for promotion. Um, Martin Newland is Marley Watkins going to be a capable replacement for House and different players? Um, Watkins is is a forward. He's going to play in that attacking three if we see a similar formation yeah. to to next season. Whereas House and central midfielder. The the other side of the House and debate, I suppose, is Graham Dorrance. We've seen him linked with a uh, move to Rangers in in recent days. Apparently, he's also keen for family reasons to 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 move back north. So. Um, can you see both of them going this summer? Well, who knows? I mean, yeah, I mean, there is, clearly there are going to be clubs who are interested in Graham Dorans yeah. um, at a certain level, but that, that would leave a, a quite sizable gap in Norwich's central midfield stocks. <laughs> <Certainly> um, <laughs> but having said that, you know, Tete and Louis Thompson, subject to him coming back to, with a, you know, the end of his rehab. They're two similar type of holding type players, and, and and again maybe under Farker it's more you've got your solid foundation there, your platform almost in central midfield, and then the creativity will be the Pritchard, the Wezes, um, Madison maybe not uh, certainly not to start the season, and the two Murphys. So it's almost um, they might feel if that's the way they want to go that they've got two of that type in there. But I certainly think if we ran with that scenario and you lost House and you lost Dorans, I think you'd probably still need to bring in one of that type of player because that. We know Tete, over the course of a season, isn't going to play the full 46 games. Um, and he's not going to keep the ball no, 95% that as well. of the time. That, as well. that, would be, that would be an issue, yeah, because as you say, that's what Dorans does bring you. I know he has his detractors, but he certainly, in terms of uh, you know being a quarterback who gets Norwich playing and on the front foot and retaining possession, which, from what Farker was very clear to us the day he was unveiled, he's a possession-based coach. He wants to retain the ball. So if that is the case, then maybe there's still a role for Dorans to play. Mm, absolutely. Uh, James Frost, I think it's decent bis- business from the club. It's good to see us doing business early. Stuart Weather isn't messing around. He's just getting things done. Kevin Baldwin, will Housen's pigeons be OK? <laughs> um, which I think leads um, <laughs> nicely into um, you know saying that he's been here more than five years. He's yeah. served Norwich well, hasn't he? You know, he's, in, he's in the top 100 appearances list. Uh, I think it was 188 appearances he's on now, isn't it? Off the top of my head, that, that is. So... Johnny Housen, very popular guy, won player of the season at the end of the, the last Premier League season, yeah. was runner-up last year. If he is to move on this summer, he has served Norwich City very well for the money they paid. It was Paul Lambert that brought him in, wasn't yeah, it, back it was, in yeah. January 2012. They've certainly got their money's worth out of Johnny Housen. 100%, 100%. And um, I don't think anybody would begrudge that, you know, because, as I say, if, if Norwich get the funds they need, uh, and it's a fair price in terms of the selling club, and it allows them then to do a, a few other bits and pieces, which I'm sure they would want to do. Then I think both parties shake hands and, and wish each other the best. You know, he's, he's been a very, as you say, very good signing. Um, a lot of lot of has been made of some poor signings in recent windows, but you'd certainly not put him in in that category in in the last five ten years in terms of what Norwich have brought to the club. He was captain at times. Excellent, season, yeah, wasn't excellent. Uh, you know, uh, excellent character. You, you know, speak to the other players. Really popular guy in the changing room. Yeah. Fans obviously love him. Um, we will see this quality. You know, again, that, that Forest goal that will live long in the memory uh, last season, and uh, and a really really nice guy. So as I say, in an ideal world, if Norwich have got money to burn, you don't lose Johnny Housen. Yeah. But that isn't the case this summer, and so you have to unfortunately consider losing players you probably wouldn't in an ideal would want to lose. But of course, the problem is, and we saw that in the January window. You draw up a list of Norwich's squad, who do you want to lose, who don't you want to lose. It's really more a case of which clubs out there are interested in your players. And it's always going to be, as it was in that last window, your, your saleable assets, Robbie Brady, Martin Olsen. Um, this, this window, I'm sure it'll be the Closers, it'll be the Housens, the Pintos, and, and heaven forbid th- those three or four young lads we've mentioned earlier, which you don't want to lose them. You know, 
we all know the players that are probably surplus to requirements and, and the reality is if there's no bids for those players then they will stay here that's the harsh reality of it as you say plenty of water to go under the bridge yeah. yet uh, Darren Stevenson says Housen's not irre- uh, not irreplaceable um, I think it's time uh, for Housen to leave we don't want players who don't want to be at the club um, something we were talking about earlier actually wasn't it that if Johnny does end up here at the start of uh, next season I think and you know things don't work out yeah. for him you can still trust him he'll still play yeah. he'll still give you his all won't he uh, one other thing that comes to mind um, if a Premier League club were to were to come in say Burnley who've yeah. got a bit of money yeah. do you think he's still capable of operating at that level? Yeah it's a debate isn't it um, I mean I remember Alex Neil. He, he was in no doubt last season that Johnny Arson is still a Premier League player yeah. um, well I mean, you use Burnley, and I've just touched on him, Robbie Brady. Robbie Brady went to Burnley in the back end of the, of the season and, and wasn't a regular starter by any stretch. And, um, you know, he went for a lot more money than probably Arsene would command. So, no, I think I think the harsh nature of it is he probably isn't. As but, a starter. Yeah, as a starter in, in your 1-11 to in the Premier League, week in, week out. No, you wouldn't say Johnny Arsene is in that category. But certainly, as a guy who could do a job at Premier League level in the right setting and for the right club, yeah, I think I think he could do. But... Yeah, I take your point. You get the sense that it's probably going to be more top-end championship rivals, which, of course, is another scenario entirely if he comes here to Carrow yeah. next season. <laughs> Hopefully um, he doesn't score any no, wonder volleys we, from... No, we don't need any of that. Yards. But I think it might more be... Uh, I would I would say, looking at it at this stage, um, yeah, more top-end championship rather than maybe Premier League suitors. OK. Adam George thinks he's worth uh, £10 million. Um, Alex Reid says no player is irreplaceable as well uh, wouldn't want Johnny Housen to go however every player has a price and perhaps a freshening up may not be a bad thing uh, we're certainly seeing a freshening up already aren't we I mean with all the players who have been released um, that was another little bit of news yesterday Ryan Bennett joined Wolves got a, got himself a three year deal which is a you know good for him at that stage of his career isn't it um, what else have we got here plenty of comments coming through uh, David Parsons remember Wes Houlihan wanted to move to Aston Villa two seasons ago yet yeah, he's still with us so will it be the same with Housen don't think that's the same situation here, is it? We've, with the yeah. young family, it seems like I, I think his daughter is of uh, the age where she's about to start going to, to primary school. So I, 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 we saw her on the on the pitch on the last day of the season, didn't we? Didn't we with Johnny? So um, I guess that that may well come into their thoughts that the yeah. family are looking to put down yeah. roots. Well, I mean, he's, he's he's always been very consistent. You know, that he, he's a proud Yorkshireman, and I don't think he's one of these. Uh, funny enough, you mentioned Wes. I, I saw some quotes earlier in the summer that Wes was saying that. He's been here so long, the family love it, but beyond his playing career, he probably would stay. And we've seen so many, uh, Grant Holt you know, being the one that springs to mind recently, so many ex-players who just love this part of the world. I don't think necessarily Johnny Arson would be in that category. I, I think he, he's always struck me as a guy who is basically here, will give his all for the club, but his roots are back in Yorkshire, and, and that, I think, is ultimately where he will want to head back to. Absolutely. Right, well, we're going to wrap up in just a minute, so get your final comments in. But just to bring things back full circle, uh, Marley Watkins is the reason uh, we, we kicked off the, the Facebook Live today. I know we've uh, spoken about Johnny Housen a lot because that's a controversial issue, but signing across the line, all things moving in the right direction. He's also just been called up into the Wales squad yeah. for the first time, hasn't he? So uh, we've had some pretty decent Wales internationals at Norwich over the years. Ewan Roberts, Craig Bellamy, that obviously spring to mind. Chris Llewellyn, maybe not not quite so much, but um, yeah, he's a guy that is going to come to the fore, and he could well be a, a teammate of, of Gareth Bale's next week potentially, could not they? Well, we all saw what the Welsh group of players did at the Euros last summer. That that is a a really promising crop of players. You know, the Ramses Bale obviously is the standout, and uh, Ben Woodburn, I think the Liverpool lad, I think he's in and around it now. So if Marley Watkins is good enough to be in consideration for that crop of players. That is, a, forward, that, yeah. that is another positive. That is another positive that Norwich have signed in a lad who could could be a very very astute acquisition. Mm. I, mean, I noticed in his quotes as well, he used the word project a few times, <laughs> um, and he talked about Norwich's Premier League ambition. So, you know, he, he, to me, he looks similar build to Jamie Vardy as well. Yeah. And the way that the highlights that I've seen from him online, he seems to play in that sort of similar similar way, fit and and quick. So. Uh, he's saying all the right things. Uh, right, loads to get your teeth into at Pinkin.com already, and we'll uh, have full uh, analysis and reaction in, in tomorrow's papers. Uh, but for now, we'll, we'll wrap up uh, Facebook Live, but I'm sure we'll be back with you soon because there's going to be plenty more signings and there's probably a few, few more players to go out uh, before, uh, before this month is out, quite possibly. Cheers.